So, Season 10 is here. We're going to preview it because we missed down the title by a single point last year and I'm still upset about it. Despite finishing in second place, we're only still expected to get a 12th place finish. Lecce Poznan and Lecce Warsaw now actually considered equal terms and Lecce Poznan are apparently the better team than Lecce Warsaw despite the fact they had a horrible season last year when they finished in 12th place. So that's a thing. Still, the league reputation has actually gone up by another place, a 12th place now, so we're getting better and better in that regards. What else can we do now that we're 50 to 1 odds to win the league? The fact that there are so many teams with 51 odds to win the league is interesting to say the least. And yes, Fawiki is in the Media Dream 11 at the age of 19. We've got a superstar on our hands. Sponsorship income, we're only 9th with 1.2 million in sponsorship income this year, which again potentially tells me just how difficult it would be to break into the top bracket. So that's because they've got their tycoon takeover, so that's why they've got so much money, but... If we want to be amongst the better teams, we need to get more sponsorship money coming in and just continue generating our players and producing our players. Going into the development center, we've got a lot of players that are considered promising prospects who could be first team candidates and two players who are considered promising by themselves. So that's already a good sign to say the least. What I have forgotten to mention, and I really should do this more often, is the fact that I've sold some big players over the years and... We sold Doris Korosek for 210000 He is now listed for loan as one of our clubs. We get 50% of any fee that they sell him for for the future. And given he's worth between potentially fifty five and 550000 we could get some decent money from that. But perhaps the biggest sell that we made was actually Brzezinski. Yes, we sold our number one goalkeeper in the January transfer window. Was this a good move? Maybe not, but... I wasn't really playing him. He played once me last year. He got a 6.5 rating. He's never really gotten a good rating for me. And I thought, I need to get rid of him because he's had one year where he was really bad and we almost got relegated from it. He had that bad rating here and I was concerned. And yes, we won the title in these two seasons here, in the 28, 29, 29, 30 seasons where he did quite well for us. But I never really felt like he was a first choice goalkeeper and I needed to replace him long term if I was to potentially be really good. The fact he got brought by our rivals for, as a backup tells me that I might be the right call and we've got so many young talents in the goalkeeping department coming through that it makes sense to get rid of him. But I have made one signing in the staff department so far this season and that is Patrick Van Truba. So again, he's 35 years of age from Slovakia, he's got good potential. He's got good attributes for what I'm looking for as a performance analysis, and hopefully we can use that for long term. If I wanted to make him one, I could make him the head performance analysis, but I didn't feel like it was the right time to replace our current one right now. But I also want to go back to my current head of development, Jose Cruz, who actually has decent knowledge of Poland now, speaks the language Polish, and he's actually improved his attributes. He's now got better defending and mental attributes in the coaching side of things and has got a better judgment player ability in the knowledge side of things despite the fact he's not got a new coaching badge and is refusing to get one so who knows maybe we might actually get something in the future but it's good that he's doing it and his personality and media handling style still is the highlight for me but if he gets better by himself without me doing anything then who knows we might have a star on our hands now while our Youth facilities are now down to good. We are improving it, thankfully. So we don't have to worry about that so much. And I will be able to show you this way here now that we are improving the youth facilities. We are also able to get some of our coaches to improve their coaching courses as well. But in four months' time, the youth facilities will be back up to great. And hopefully, long term, we can improve it again so they can be superb. But I'm not holding hope for it because I know what the sport is like. And I know what the game is like at this point in time. But now we look at the players that are in the squad plan for this year. And there's only two goalkeepers. And Silka has gotten better. Is he amazing? Probably not. I think at this point he's going to be maybe a top tier player in the future. But only a decent or good top tier player for goalkeeping. But he's better than what we had already. So hopefully he can improve and do better and better. But we do have Michel Noak who again is getting better. And this time, he's only 17. He's considered a promising goalkeeper, one of two players who has that description by the media, and I think he could be really good. It's just a shame his composure is so bad, as it's his first touch. But everything else could be decent. I am going to talk about Victor Sokol as well, even though he's only 15. He also has a promising goalkeeper description, but has a low determination, so that's the issue with him. 
He's also considered a third tier goalkeeper, but he's a two star kind of busy player. So who knows? He might actually be good in the future, but I just want to think that potentially we've got some good goalkeepers. It's just a shame his first start to composure is also really bad, as well as his anticipation. He needs a lot of work, but he's also only 15, so he's got plenty of time in his hands. I can give him like three years before I need to really go give him some first in football long term. Right back position, you can already see some problems. And actually, Martin OK has already been given a new loan deal because he he's actually able to play for his current club that just got promoted from the tier below in the top flight this year. So he will not be part of my plans. So we could just we could just rule this guy out already. Yeah, after I asked the assistant to talk about the show the stuff about this position, OK gets taken out. But here we are now. Misha Cool is the first of two right back to talk about here. He is easy the better one, but he's 32. I might need to replace him at some point. I think he's only got a year left in his deal. I don't know if I want to give him another deal, even though he's a good player for this division and is consistent. I might need to play him still, but I don't know. Do I give him a new deal or not? That's the question. Because I was actually starting this guy last year, and maybe that's one of the reasons why we didn't win the league, was because this guy started more than last year. But yeah, Marcin's been okay. He's actually a decent player for this division now, and could be better. I don't know how much better we can get, but if he can get, become a good player for this division, then that's long term. We've got someone here for the time being, but it's not the end of the world if he doesn't. Left back. Again, I'm just going to ask this assistant to suggest for this composition. He doesn't take anyone out this time, but we have a few players that I will be using here every way. Two of them, in fact. Marcel is the first choice still and is easily the better player here. He doesn't look big matches, but he is good for his division and is very consistent. So that's perfect for me as far as I'm concerned, especially when he's playing as a wingback on attack. And I'm actually using Mr. Najad as the left back as well. And I'm actually going to now officially start training him there so he can play the role. I haven't done it the last few years, but honestly, I felt he could play as a centre-back as well if he needs to be. He's also only 5 foot 11. So that's the reason why I haven't really played him as a left-back. Uh, that's the reason I've been playing more of a left-back than a centre-back, but he can play as a centre-back as well. He is very inconsistent, but we can definitely work with that. And he's a second-tier player as well, so it's why long-term we can work with it. And he's only 17 still. So centre-backs, we can already talk about what's happened here. Shiroki is easily our best player at the club now, the only player in the Middle Dream 11, and is wanted by some big clubs. Stockgard, Gladbach, Como? I don't, they're in Serie A. Okay, Como in Serie A this year, so fair enough. They're actually, they actually survived in Serie A. How did I not notice this beforehand? But yeah, Serie A teams, three of them, at least one Serie A team at this point. Lesia Poznan and Pagon, also won him, but I have faith we'd better keep hold of this guy. He's got never three years left in his contract, and he's a superstar. He's a top tier player. I want him to be a star player for us in the future and to get his first cap for Poland when he's with us. He's fairly professional and has reserved personality. Now, Jaros is one of those players that is temperamental, very inconsistent, but he's actually good enough for this team and this division now. And I wish I knew why he was able to develop as well as he is, but I'm not complaining either. He is apparently better as a left back, but I'm playing as a centre back because he's six foot two, 13 jumping reach. Why would I not play him as a centre back? That's my question right now. And he could be a ball playing defender too. So definitely someone we can use here. He's got good value. He's got three years left in his deal. He is supporting a player. I won't tell you who he support. I can totally tell you who support him because Chichecki is upset about something. But either way, a thing for another time when we get to that player in question. But yeah, Chichoki is still at the club. I am about I'm actually looking to sell him because he is 32 years of age now. He's not good enough for the division anymore. And he's not really in my first team plans. He's a, good he's a good player for the second tier, and he's very consistent, but he's just not good enough for us, unfortunately, and that's a shame. But what can you do? It's just unfortunate, really, when you can we finally get to a player that is just not good enough anyway for the time at all, even though you love him the bits, and he's been with you for the very first season. Nine years he's been with us. He's been with us all the way, and our leading record player, so there you go. So, other player to talk about is Michel Fiasek, who has scored... 11 goals and 134 points as a centre back. As a weapon from set pieces. Problem is, he, while he's consistent, he's still only a second tier player. I don't think he's going to get much better, which is a shame because I think he's really useful as a weapon. We might have a weapon in a striker from set pieces soon. So maybe his time as a centre back, as six foot seven, 
might be coming to a close. Even though he's fairly professional, he just hasn't really got so much better. And I'm really sad about it because I genuinely thought he could be really, really useful. And apparently he could be better in the air. That's kind of awkward when you look at it that way, isn't it? DM, I'm not going to talk about Suriki. I am going to talk about other players, though. Bollock has out and out become the player that I'm going to use in the DM position. He's now good enough for the top flight. He's wanted by Karlsruhe of all teams. No idea why, but actually I do know why. He's quite good. Karlsruhe, I think, are the second tier Germany. Let's just double check this. Now they're in the Bundesliga. Okay, that's awkward. But Karlsruhe wanting him is annoying because I think we can actually keep hold of this guy. He does have only two years left in his contract. We need to improve his ball control. Yeah, I can see that right there. I think we need to work on. We've also got Adrian, who apparently has been playing as a centre-back for some reason. Not a centre-back. Is listed for loan. Was injured after having a really good start to this, his career at uh, Godwika. He got a really bad injury last time. He's actually good enough to be a top-flight player in this division, which for a two-and-a-half-star player is quite good. The fact it's now two-and-a-half-stars is useful, and it tells me that we have a good option in the DM position, and maybe just DMs generally are really strong in this team at this point. He is wanted by a few teams. I say a few teams. They all want a transfer. He's listed for loan. So that could be awkward. Damien Kotko is also now a top flight player, which is interesting. He is one of our two clubs in our division. The lesser teams, honestly. And maybe I send him out on loan or something. I don't know, but he's injury prone. He's the third player that's really good. He actually loves big matches though, so actually could be useful. He is... Potentially going to be good enough to be a good player. First division, he's a decent player right now. So, absolutely could use him. But, with Bollock in his way and Adrian also there. Could be useful to get other things. Again, needs to work on his ball control because of dribbling. Why is it my deep line playmakers in a DM position need to work on their ball control? So, Michel Polesny, I generally want to say he's going to be really good. I think I've sent him out on loan. No, he's come back from his loan spell, but he's out on loan last year, played 13 times. He has improved a little bit, but he's also 19. I think an out on loan spell is needed for this guy. I really do. So maybe we could just send him out on loan again. And he's only 19, so definitely could benefit from a loan spell. We've already got three players who could be better than him in the first team as it is. So yeah, loan spell for him potentially. So center fields, we've got two players who are really good. One for box to box, one for Mazala. As I'm sure you can understand, I'm excited about my position because how strong our centre midfield are. But Thomas Korosek is easily our best midfielder now, I think, as far as I'm concerned. Look at the state of him. He's got four years left in his contract. The only weakness he has is the fact he's only got six jumping reach. That's his only weakness. He's consistent. He's good enough to be a top flight player at the age of 18. He can get better and better, which is great. I love that. Problem is, his partner might want to leave. And this guy's also got a band's personality, so yeah, could be better, or it could be worse. Kasper Czeczeki is also only 18, and he's quite good. He's inconsistent, though, but he's upset I didn't let him join Reims. He's got two years left in his contract, but I can extend his contract by next three years, so I'm not going to let him go. Besides, I don't think they even offered him a million, and he's one of my Lille, Dortmund, Coma, Reims, and Sassuolo. He's in my first team plans. He's a first team player. I'm not letting him go for anything. He's my Mazala, first and foremost. I could use him as a box-to-box, to be honest with you, but I want him to be my Mazala, first and foremost. He's quite good. He's got 14 finishing and could be in a second midfield as well. So why would I let him go when he's already a fan favourite and he's quite good at the role? If we can get our two second midfielders to be consistently playing first team football and doing really well, I could be really excited. I really could be. But yes, we've got a few players that also need some work. And Adam is out on loan, I think. Yeah, he's at Olympia right now, so he could be coming back. And I think... I thought he was already a first-team player. Apparently, he's not a first-team player, like, on the level. So he's still a second-tier player. Inconsistent, but he's only 21. Maybe another spell out on loan could be good for him. I don't know, but he's useful. He's been doing well for me in the past. 12 goals and 138 appearances. So he's definitely been the first team a lot. But with the two 18-year-olds now in the first team... He's got to struggle to get first team football, so maybe a loan spell's needed. But yeah, Majed was in the first team as well. He's actually still a second tier player, could be better. I think he'd definitely be a first team player in the future, but again, with the two 18 year olds now in the first team, he's going to find his way in the first team very difficult to get into at this point. And we've also got Damien, who I've actually used on the wings in recent times. I think he's, this is his last season at the club. I really do. 
I love this guy because he's been really good in the past, but he hates big matches. He's only going to be a second tier player from now on. He's not going to get much better. And while he's consistent, I just don't think he's a first team player for us anymore. And he will need to move on, I think, to better his own career. Which is a shame because I love this guy, the Beasters. He's done really well for me in the past. 46 goals in 328 matches. He's been really useful. He's just also on too much money with 3.7 grand a week. So no one's surprised, Polak is still our first choice right winger, but he is also on 6.25 grand a week, which probably isn't great. 152 appearances, 15 goals. Over the years, he's been really good. He's a top tier player. He is inconsistent. That used to be red. I'm almost certain it says going down to orange, which is very, very useful. He is 21, can definitely improve still. And I think he's a decent player, maybe a good player for this division. But definitely can still improve. I need him to improve a bit more. And work on his agility and bounce, apparently. Which says a lot. But I'm using him as a verted winger. And who knows? He could definitely improve. And then we've got Ignacy Kostopola, who also is a player that could definitely be the first team long term. Very inconsistent, though. It's the only issue I have with him. But he's a second tier player and can definitely improve. So, first team football. Last year, he broke his leg. Which wasn't good his, his layers last year he broke his foot at the early stage of the season well um international duty for three months so i don't think he's really recovered from it fully yet but if he could definitely get better then who knows he might benefit from that long term and the last player that we're going to use of the right winger for this team is sebastian gukowski and inconsistent yes and also a third tier player but definitely could be a top flight player in the future i think at the age of 16 he's got a lot of room to grow he could be here for another two seasons developing his game and getting some first team football thrown in every now and again so definitely a long-term prospect in that regards and is definitely part of the first team plans for me this year so left wing a bit bare really and Alexander Supreme is already out for an injury pulled hamstring but he is our first choice player on the left inconsistent yes but he's also a good top flight player who can get better and better so there's that we need to work on his crossing which is saying a lot as an inverted winger but we can work on that it says a lot that Camille Piatron, who is a striker, potentially, is being touted as a left wing as well, and is the second choice of all the players I have. And I think I could see it, because he definitely has the attributes for the work, but it's good to see him there. He's a third-tier player and inconsistent, but he could definitely be better and better. Well, Augustine is a horrible, casual personality. 20 years of age, I've had loads buzz out. He never played for his clubs, which I think is a problem, and we need to work on that, but... Maybe throw him in the first team, even though he's a third tier player. It's the weakest ever the team, I think, at this point, is the left winger, which is a bit awkward, but what can you do? Oh, I just played Kowalski, who's my first choice striker, out on the left wing. I don't know, but yeah, he is one of those players who could be really good, but he's a striker first and foremost, and is earning 8.5 grand a week. He's got three years left in his deal right now, but could improve his free kicks. Personally, might need to improve a few things like his agility or his composure and finishing, but that's just me. But just since he was out on loan last year at Olympia, he actually just missed out the title despite scoring seven goals and getting an assist in 15 matches. So he was really good for the team last year out on loan. He could play as, as a trachista of all things, so there you go. Also, could Pasali play as a semi fielder? I don't know why he could play there, but I'm not complaining. He's now a top level player and. I think we missed him last year when he was out, when he was out alone. I think not having just Jasinski out in the team hurt us and might be the reason why we lost the title. And I can't be able to say that, but generally, I think him not being at the team definitely hurts more than I like to admit. So, move for four, he's a top level player who I definitely will be using more this year. I think that we did get David his debut and he got three goals in the last two or three games so that's there's that and he's a second tier player i think at this point he does need football though six foot five could be a weapon to set pieces so maybe i use him as well or oh, i send him out alone i haven't decided yet but maybe maybe loan spell could be good for him either way though i'm gonna end this here where do you think we're first this year do you think the media prediction of 12 is the best place for us and do you think when we have the players back from our loan spells that we can actually go up the season preview list or not because i'm curious to see if that's the case and if you think that's the case as well and we'll talk about it when we come back for the next video but either way i hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves i hope you guys like and share this video and let you subscribe to the channel it really does help me out a lot but either way until next time goodbye and well good night